Hello, students. How we doing? Got a poll for you to take. Just a second. There's your poll, should, and that's today's topic. Should the US government make the COVID vaccine mandatory? So simple yes or no will do there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for voting, as always. Um, so the topic is, obviously, should we make the COVID vaccine mandatory? Okay, I'm gonna go to, like I always do to my PowerPoint. So give me a second here, I'll share that with you. And then um, make sure you guys have the, the Google Doc up and going so you can, get some of this stuff down uh, for the discussion, it looks like, unless more people come in, the discussion we can have as a class. Go ahead and share my screen here, here we go. Okay. So, um, can the federal government make, or Ohio government force its citizens to get vaccinated? Okay, that's our topic. Now, I want to start off with some facts. This is the um, this is the trend for uh, the COVID vaccine from the last year, and you can see, um, you know, right around here is when cases started to hit, and then it leveled off. Why did it level off? Well, because you know there wasn't any vaccine yet. That's when everybody was locked down, and then you can see it starts to go up in the summer because that's when um, they took off the, uh, the restrictions, the, the, the lockdown, I should say, and they put other restrictions in like wearing masks and so forth. And then you can see in the fall, it goes way up and it reaches a peak. What would you say? That's probably around Christmas time. Um, and that's when people started to get together and the, the Center for Disease Control predicted this was gonna happen. But you can see a dramatic fall off uh, here. Um, and that is, that's when people are starting to get vaccinated. Uh, it rose up a little bit, but you can see this is through Monday, May 16th is the lowest it's been since really right around, uh, the first uh, days of lockdown. So that's pretty good. So this, you see the light at the end of the tunnel here, uh, and, and the virus is, I don't think the virus is disappearing, but we're learning how to deal with it. Okay. Now, uh, here is, this is again, this is through Monday. This is from the Center for Disease Control. Uh, here's how much of our total population has been vaccinated, okay? And it's got it broken down by age, age years. Let's look at total population. Okay. One dosage, that's almost half, 40, 48%. Okay, I'm sure it's above 48% now. Mr. Ficker? Yes. Is this just for Ohio or nationwide? Uh, good, good question. This is nationwide. And so was the, so was the, uh, the line graph here. Okay. okay. That was, yeah, thank you for asking that. Um, so yeah, this is nationwide. So, uh, there, and I find this, I still find this to be amazing. 344 million doses of the vaccine have been delivered. They've been made. And then 274 million have been administered. I find that to be amazing that, you know, a year ago, we didn't know what was going to happen. They said, well, we're working on a vaccine. And here it is. You know, it was like six months after they made the vaccine, you know, uh, really, eight, I guess it's about eight months now that look at how many people have gotten it. Okay. So 37.3% uh, are fully vaccinated. And like I said, almost half or at least have one dose. Um, people under the age of 12, um, 44%, that's above the national average. Um, are getting, have gotten 
fully vaccinated. Um, under 18, it's 47. And then people 65 and older, 72.8%. So majority of the seniors have at least, you know, 80, 85% have had one dose. So where is the problem in this? Where, which group of people are not getting vaccinated? And it's people between the ages of like 22 and 50 uh, that are not getting vaccinated. So uh, that poses a, an issue, doesn't it? You know, we're getting rid of the masks mandate uh, in a couple of weeks and all the restrictions in a couple of weeks in Ohio. Are we going to go back to this where we see an upswing in the amount of cases okay now for certain um diseases in ohio this is just ohio there are laws in ohio that says you have to get these vaccinations if you want to go to school or if you want to send your kids to uh, daycare okay so you have to be um you have to be vaccinated against chicken pox. That was new. They didn't have a chicken pox vaccine when I was younger. Everybody got it. Uh, people don't get it now. Uh, diphtheria, hepatitis, measles. Um, what I've, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Menig something disease. Mumps, pertussis, polio, rubella, and tetanus. Okay. So you have to be immunized, immunized against those in order to go to school now uh, or, or daycare. In Ohio, there's exceptions. If you've had the disease and you required natural immunity. My middle son, my 22-year-old son, did not have to get the um, small po smallpox, chickenpox vaccine because he got it when he was like six months old, uh, the disease. So he's now has immunity to it. Uh, the vaccine is not medically appropriate for the child's age. Uh, you know, again, this is, this, this is COVID. Do we, do we give three-year-olds a COVID vaccine? Uh, I don't, we don't know that yet. It hasn't been tested on three-year-olds. So they're, they're not required to get it. The previous medical condition makes the vaccine dangerous to the child. I would imagine this would apply to COVID vaccines too. Uh, and then this is the sticking point. The parent's child declines the vaccination for reasons of conscience, including religious convictions. They're opposed to people being vaccinated time for whatever reason. And a lot of people don't want to get vaccinated because um, they, they're they worried about potential side effects. There's always side effects with a vaccine for the most part. I got a shingles vaccine earlier in the year. It kicked my butt more so than the, um, the COVID vaccine. But you get, you know, the way a vaccine works is you get a little bit of, of the disease in your body. So your body genetically recodes itself to fight the disease next time it comes along. Okay, now here are some yes arguments as to why we should require people to get the vaccination. Vaccines are safe. Now they're not 100% safe and they're never 100% safe. Um, there was one that was used, the, the one that, I don't, I don't know the name of it, but the one that they predominantly used in, in the European Union have caused people to have uh, side effects, blood clots, heart attacks, things like that. So they pulled that off of the market. Okay, so are these vaccines safe? I had somebody in my family who said, I'm not getting vaccinated until they prove they're safe. Well, um, they're never going to be, I don't think they're ever going to be 100% safe. Uh, poll shows that 25% of Americans don't want a vaccine. They're going to refuse the vaccine. Um, to have herd immunity, we need 60 to, 70, 60 to 70% vaccinated. Now we've reached herd immunity for people 65 and older, but in order for that to work, the people 65 and older can only hang out with people 65 and older, you know, that, that group. So and if, to have herd immunity across all of our age groups, we've got to have 60 to 70% vaccinated. Okay. And you can see if everybody except for this 25% gets, get vaccinated, then we'll be, we'll have herd immunity and herd immunity equals a return to normal. We all want life to become normal. You know, those of you that were in, class with me. We were talking about this the day after Ohio announced it was going to lift its, its, um, all of its restrictions, you know, and there, and students were asking about next school year. Looks like it's going to be a normal school year. You know, you guys are going to have a prom. You'll have a, a homecoming dance. You'll have a graduation, a full graduation ceremony, all that stuff. Um, but what increases that return to normal is if more people get vaccinated, more doses are available. Uh, my son works at Meyer, and he, they just made an announcement one day. They had no, they had no more appointments 
for vaccines and they had some vaccines left over and they made an announcement. Any employee want to get vaccinated? My, my son ran out there and ran to the pharmacy and got vaccinated. And also this is a national health emergency. So any constitutional arguments aren't really valid in you know people that, that say we should uh, force people to get vaccinated. Um, because it's a national health, it's an emergency. You know, we tend to forget about constitutional restrictions during an emergency, World War II, the Civil War, and so forth. Okay, um, the no arguments. This is what people are saying who feel like you shouldn't force a vaccine. Operation Warp Speed was the name of the vaccine. It's put together of, of the vaccine program, I should say, the, the manufacturing and testing of it was started by the Trump administration, finished by the Biden administration. Um, you know, this, it normally takes a couple of years to manufacture and test a vaccine. We did that in six months, uh, actually even less than that, like four and a half months. Is it really truly safe? Um, second, there's a lot of mistrust, not just of vaccines, but of our federal government. And there's a lot of misinformation out there that's spread by both the left and the right, spread misinformation about our government via the internet, social media. And plus then making all making that a mandate, that's a public relations disaster. There are people who truly believe that in the vaccine, not only are you getting the vaccine, but the government is putting a microchip in you so you can be tracked. Okay. And my youngest son jokingly, he works at Kroger. He came in and he goes, hey, I got my my uh got my microchip today. And of course we were laughing about that, but people really believe that. And it's not kids that believe it. I'm talking about, you know, middle-aged people, people my age, they believe that they're being put, uh, a, a microchip is being put into them, okay? Um, okay, masks and social distancing, those were mandatory. How did that go? How many times did you see people not social distancing out in, you know, at wherever in public without a mask, you know, indoors? Um, that's something that, you know, I, I, I keep bringing this up, but I work out a plan of fitness and they had a very clear up They have two sets of steps. One was designed to be up and one designed to be down to maintain social distancing. I watched and there are very clear stickers. You know, it's like three feet long on the floor that says this is the up steps. And the other one says this is the down steps. People just didn't pay any attention to that. And medical ethics could be violated. Um, should the government make you put something into your body that violates medical ethics could violate medical ethics okay what medical what doctors and medical um, you know nurses and so forth what they feel is 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 medically correct uh, constitutional freedoms protect against this government can't force the citizens to put something in their bodies that is that's a pretty succinct statement. The government cannot force us to put something in our bodies. If we allow them to, the government to force us to do this, where does it stop? All they have to do is declare an emergency and hey, there you go. Um, we can be forced to do whatever we want. I don't think we want that as a nation. And also there's already consequences for non-vaxxers, people that don't want to get vaccinated. You know, they have to wear a mask in public. There's limited travel. There's a lot of places. I just read that Italy, if you're an American, they want you to travel to Italy, but only if you can prove that you've been vaccinated. Um, cruise ships are starting to, you know, take people back in on, on vacations, but you got to prove that you're vaccinated. Um, so, you know, there are already consequences for people that don't want to get vaccinated. And of course, one of the biggest consequences is they can get sick. And if they want to choose that for themselves, we should let them choose whether or not they get sick. Okay. All right. Any questions to you guys before I put you in breakout rooms so you can discuss this? Any questions about any of that data or any of the laws or so forth? Okay, I am going to make, I'm just going to make, I'll make two breakout rooms. Uh, you guys can go in there, make sure you're filling out the form and Francis, make sure you turn it in. I know you're always here and you turn a bunch of them in the other day, but make sure you turn that in today. That'll be very, very helpful for you and everybody else. Make sure you, uh, you do that. Okay, so the breakout rooms will be a little bit bigger. Um, and there you go.
Okay, welcome back, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and put the Jamboard up. Share that with you. Uh, there's a link to it, of course, on Classroom. So go ahead and put your thoughts on here. Okay, so uh, post-it notes, whatever, whatever you want to do for here. Um, but what do you think about that? Should should we have a mandatory COVID vaccine for people in Ohio or the nation? Go ahead and shout out your answers if you want, your thoughts, or put them on uh, the jam board here. Any of you, any of you been vaccinated or any of you not want to get the vaccine? You, know, you don't have to just take a look at what we took a look at or what I took a look at, but, um, you know, go ahead and tell me what you think. I get my second dose of the vaccine today. Wow. Okay. So which, which one are you getting? Pfizer. I'm pretty sure it's the only one available for my age group, but I was going to get that one anyways. Yeah. Okay, now how does that make you feel? Um, I don't mean physically, I mean mentally. How does that make you feel knowing that, you know, very soon you, you're going to be uh, footloose and fancy free when it comes to, to COVID? Um, it definitely makes me more calm because it means that I don't have to worry um, if I see my grandparents, like what if I'm going to get them sick or my little 10 month old niece or anything like that? Because I, I have been seeing them, but I've always been careful. Um, so it's going to help me relax more when seeing people who I know are susceptible to getting it. Um, and but of course, I'm still going to wear my mask and ev everything everywhere because we still don't know how long the vaccine will last because I've seen things say that it only lasts about six months or maybe a year, and it might have to be one that we get multiple times, which is fine with me. Um, but I'm still going to wear my mask and take all the precautions, but it just makes me feel a little bit more relaxed having the vaccine and knowing I have the, that protection. Yeah, that's, that's how I felt after, after I got my second one, I felt, you know, well, at least I'm okay. Um, and then, but I, you know, you still have to be aware of the people around you too. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good point. All right, why don't you start, start throwing your stuff on the jam board? There's nothing on there yet. Um, also, go ahead and, you know, shout out your thoughts. Should, should we be forced by the government to put something into our bodies, maybe that we don't want to put in our bodies? <laughs> you guys are quiet today. All right. Francis says he's been vaccinated. And as much as I want to agree with manda mandated vaccines and have everyone vaccinated, I don't think it should be forced. Yeah. And um, also, I think, too, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go along with you on that one, Francis. Um, if there's people on the fence about getting vaccinated um, and then more and more people get vaccinated, Will that cause those people sitting on the fence to say, all right, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll go ahead and I feel OK. I'll go ahead and get vaccinated. So you, you kind of set the, the wheels in motion, as they say. Um, because, you know, like, like I said, you know, there's there's people that are hesitant. But if somebody else gets it first, they might be more willing to, to get it. Okay, uh, somebody on the Jamboard said, I prefer everybody get the vaccine and it become mandatory, but I totally understand that it is freedom that is being taken away. That is correct. Um, now, uh, let's see, somebody else put, uh, this is a long one, I don't, I, this, the COVID vaccine should not be mandatory because the government shouldn't force anyone to put anything in their bodies without permission. Well, obviously they would have your permission. When you show up, you got to sign a waiver. 
you know, in a permission slip. But the point is, is that that you're, you know, you're being forced to do that. Um, it is again some people's religions and beliefs to get vaccinated. Although COVID is dangerous to yourself and may put others in at, at, uh, in danger of getting COVID, the government should only continue to motivate others to get the vaccine rather than practically force them to. We also don't know how people will react to it, especially since everyone may react differently and who knows how long the effectiveness will last. Those are some excellent points. Um, you know, do you trust that it's been 100% um, tested? And like I said, normally it's it takes, you know, two years or so to get a drug or a vaccine out on the market. Um, let's see who somebody wrote. I understand that they want uh, herd immunity, but I feel personal. It's a personal decision about what goes into your body is more important. If one wants to risk their own health knowingly, let them. Okay, that's yeah, that's is is um, is kind of I don't know. Uh, you know, freedom is what I'm trying to say is you know, freedom is the basis of of our society in America. So, um, if you have the freedom to to do you know what you want to do for the most part but there's consequences that go with it and the consequences might be you get sick okay anybody else want to mention anything about this okay listen before you guys go before i let you go i just wanted to tell you thank you for participating and joining in the fuck me <laughs> participating and joining in these zoom meetings this has been the highlight of my year um spending time with you guys talking about these issues and i went through and looked we discussed 12 really important social and political issues and you guys did it in a rational reasonable and non uh confrontational way so uh kudos to you guys for doing this the right way there's a lot of adults that could look at what we do and say maybe we should do things more along those lines <laughs> to have a nice civil discussion so i miss teaching this year uh i can't wait for this year to be over with but this is certainly a bright spot and i'm going to do this again this style in you know face to face with my classes from here on out so those of you that gave me feedback on this and ideas i really appreciate it um, I, I took your, your, your thoughts to heart and those of you that were here every week, thank you very much. It's been, it's been amazing doing this with you. All right. I'm going to let you guys go. Um, we will not have a zoom meeting next week cause it'll be final exams. And don't forget that you all, you all are exempt because you all signed up for the AP test. You are all exempt from the, the final exam. Just get those personal political platform projects in. <laughs>